Hi everybody, welcome back and welcome to section one. Uh, this section is going to be about understanding where your anger comes from and what it can do to our bodies when we get angry. What happens when we get angry is that our adrenal glands, these are two little glands that sit on top of our kidneys, are going to react by releasing adrenaline. Adrenaline is a stress hormone. It, is, but it has been called the do it right now hormone. It prepares our body for one of three responses, fight, flight, or freeze. When we are faced with an emergency or something that we think is an emergency, something we perceive as a, an emergency that is something a uh, threat to our survival, we are going to either get ready to fight, that is to engage and overcome the threat, to flee, to withdraw and escape the threat, or we're going to freeze. Uh, you might have heard this being called playing dead. You're going to freeze. You're going to, what, going to go into what's called neuromuscular lock. And all three of these responses are conducive to survival and for dealing effectively with an emergency under different conditions. Now, here's the thing. It's important to note that we go into fight, flight, and freeze and release that adrenaline, not only when there's a real threat to our survival, but when there's an imagined or perceived threat to our survival. And here's the thing about being angry and the importance of this uh, survival mechanism, the fight, flight, freeze response. In angry people, this survival response is set on hair trigger. And you may also, as a very angry person, see threats where they don't exist. Now, you wouldn't wanna get rid of this response. There are a lot of forms of psychotherapy for anger that will stress relaxation, anxiety reduction, because anxiety and anger are closely related. It's going to be a lot of discussion about putting yourself in situations which increase your anxiety and learning how to tolerate that anxiety. I take a different approach. I'm going to tell you that you do not want to get rid of or blunt or numb this fight, flight, freeze response. It is critical to our survival. And here's how. From an evolutionary standpoint, this has allowed us to survive for several hundred thousand years as a human species. If we were to go far back in our, in our prehistory, um, our proto-human ancestors, what you're commonly referred to as cavemen, lived a very, very hard life. It is believed by some scientists that early man lived on the edge of starvation and thirst uh, and the human species nearly died out. Many subspecies of humans did die out, did not survive. Now, there's, there were limited resources and a great deal of competition for resources. If someone looked at your woman, uh, gave your woman too much attention, you would bash their head in, smash your head in with a rock or a tree branch uh, or, or, or choke the life out of them because that was your woman you are going to reproduce with her and produce children, pass your genetic material onto the next generation. Someone got a, near your water, um, a little trickle of water coming out of, a, coming out of a rock or a pond, you would fight them to the death for that water because it, you might not live otherwise. Same thing with food, very, very scarce. Now, fortunately, we don't live in those circumstances anymore. You want water, you turn on the faucet. Uh, you need light, you flip a switch, you are getting too cold or too hot, you turn a knob and adjust the temperature. We don't live under such dire survival circumstances anymore, at least not in the United States and most of the Western world. Granted, there are some pretty tough places around the world. Here in the U.S., we have it really, really good, actually. Um, the evolu that evolutionary survival mechanism, though, is so hardwired into us. If you are at a bar and someone bumps into you, spills your drink. If you're at a, out in a club and someone is flirting with your lady or you're, you're a, a woman and someone's flirting with your man. If you, know, if you really want to see this mechanism in action, and no, I don't suggest you do this, this is, that's a hypothetical, try taking a French fry or a potato chip off someone else's plate and see how they react. They may very well react in a primal way, like that is the last bit of food in the world. And you might get a fork planted in your hand or in your cheek, 
Um, you you don't want to mess with other people's food, other people's other people's uh, sustenance, or their family, or their or their love. You don't want to mess with that, and that is still very hardwired into us. People will respond with anger and with violence if they feel that something they need to survive is threatened, even though we no longer are in that position where we are so desperate for survival. Okay, very angry people tend to live in a very hyper aware, hyper alert state where that fight, flight, freeze response is very easily triggered. So I want you to ponder this and continue with section one and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'm getting better at this webcam. Ready? Three, two, one.